Okay, uh, hello, this is Vampire uh, here to explain myself a little bit. Uh, recently, um, I was asked to, to do an interview, and uh, I told them that I was currently uh, writing a book, which I am, and therefore, you know, I wanted to kind of focus on that. And then after that, I could, I could, uh, I could oblige. And uh, yeah, that, that is still true. But um, now what happened after that was um, I was living in Galveston. I, I had met a, a wonderful lady and, uh, you know, she, she was a wonderful girlfriend. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. So um, I just moved and uh, my life altered big time and I'm back here once again nearby in the Houston Texas area so uh, I'm just trying to get uh, back on my two feet so that that's another huge thing that that happened in in my life and uh, you know it it is what it is um, I had an amazing time down there in, in Galveston uh, if you guys uh, see my uh, Instagram account you could see some of the photos that that I uploaded where I was having uh, all kinds of fun over there but yeah unfortunately uh, it wasn't for the the long haul um, okay and um, the other thing is I'm, I'm not a big fan of um, interviews because so much of it comes across to me as like oh yeah let's talk about me um, you know as if I was some kind of celebrity and uh, I, that just doesn't really um, sit well with me I, I don't really care to to do that I'd rather train <laughs> uh, but yeah um, what I wanted to talk about here was uh, a little bit of kind of like what I what I've been doing here on YouTube. So I started what 2006, 2007, uh, somewhat around those times here on YouTube. Um, I started martial arts in 1990. That's when I started, but I started YouTube around 2006, 2007, and that is uh, makes me one of the early earlier people on on YouTube <laughs> and I if I'm not mistaken I, I think I was one of the first to be doing um, online ongoing um, Filipino martial arts type stuff on on YouTube um, you know not not that that's a big deal or anything but uh, some people just may may have uh, seen my stuff from way back <laughs> way back then but um, around I don't even know 2007 2008 um, I wrote a book at the time um, my first uh, martial arts book it, it was meant to be a textbook and it was called K4S the blueprint and it was um, my street self-defense system that I actually used at the time and um, I developed and used, and it's, you know, a big part of it is Filipino martial arts, but it's also mixed with other stuff. And um, it, I used it living in bad neighborhoods, and it really helped me out a lot. I'm still alive today. So I, I was like, I should share this with the world. And so I, I wrote this book, right? The K4S system. Um, today, I call it the vampire style, but it's basically the K4S system evolved. That's what I do today. It's the same thing, just evolved to where my um, explanations, my presentations, uh, hopefully are better. But it's pretty much the same material, okay? And uh, at the time, you know, it was called the blueprint. And, and the, the K4S blueprint was that's exactly what it was the dna the the bare bones skeleton that is necessary for you to know in order to survive the streets and that's why it was called the blueprint and there's several things that i came up with that were blueprint material and that still goes by today but one of the biggest and most important is my four ranges of combat now, the, the ranges of combat I had uh, probably first heard from 
um, the books in that I was reading in the 90s, which was I was studying Bruce Lee's books at the time uh, because when I had learned Filipino martial arts in 1990 and, and my instructor was a uh, he was learning from Professor Remy Presas. So I, I am technically a second generation student along the Professor Remy Presas lineage. So if you if you want to know my exact Filipino martial arts background, that that's what I am, second generation um, Remy Professor Remy Presas um, Arnis student. So um, that that is what my teacher had had taught me, which was Arnis, but he had also mixed it with with other styles, right? And um, anyway, anyway, um, after I left that school, I continued my my studies, my martial arts studies on my own. So I used Bruce Lee's books as a guide because a I was interested in cross training, so it really appealed to me, and. Um, there, there just wasn't a whole lot of material at the time in the 90s. You know, uh, martial arts books was kind of the way to go. It's it, The internet was not what it is today. I mean, it barely existed at the time. And then uh, a couple of years later, AOL came on, came on and, and whatnot. But, but this is before that. So, um, so Bruce Lee's fighting method. In it, he talks about um, I believe three ranges of combat, which is long, medium, and close, if I'm not mistaken. And I really like that. And then in the, if I'm not mistaken, in the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, he, then he introduces the ranges of combat. I think that most Jeet Kune Do practitioners today are familiar with, which is kicking range, punching range, and then you have your head butts, elbows, and knees, which is basically the clinch. And then you have the ground, right? Um, I wasn't a, a mega big fan of that. And then in 1993, the UFC comes out, and then it it becomes uh, it starts to become clear that there are three ranges in from from watching the UFC, which is stand up, clinch, and ground. Okay, so um, seeing all of that, right? I was like, okay, after seeing and ex experiencing those ranges, I thought to myself, how can I apply that knowledge back to my Filipino martial arts roots? And even though I would say my main, I would credit my main style as the Professor Remy Presas lineage of modern artists, um, or, or in my case, I wouldn't even say I went to modern Arnis. I would just say I was still at the Arnis phase, which is the Arnis de, de Mano, the, still the traditional phase. I never um, studied extensively to where I could get to the modern phase. Okay, just my opinion. But so there, with with the Arnis, I did after that. I cross trained with other Filipino uh, martial arts uh, styles, and um, I noticed. In Filipino martial arts, and, and I'm talking about Kali, Eskrima, and Arnis. Those are the three, okay? Those are the three that I cross-trained in. I know there's more styles in Filipino martial arts, but I didn't get to, especially living here in Texas, it was very limited. So uh, Kali, Eskrima, and Arnis, those, those are the three that, that I was able to encounter and cross-train with people. And when I did, um, I noticed that there's basically four ranges that, that I noticed in the Filipino martial arts. And that's long range, medium range, close range, and ground range. So those are my four ranges of combat. Inspired by the Jeet Kune Do, inspired by um, MMA, but then went back to the roots of Filipino martial arts and I extracted I apply that and I extracted my four ranges of combat, which is based off of, you know, like Largo Mano and Serrada and, you know, all these different uh, Filipino systems that I noticed that there's there's really four ranges of, of combat there. And um, f for me, that is important because I, I 
continuously did that and do that to this day, which is I go out from Kali Eskrima Arnis, I, I leave that world and I go into other styles and I cross train, I experience boxing, Muay Thai, uh, you know, wrestling, uh, judo, whatever. I experience other styles and then I bring it back to the Filipino martial arts and I, I apply it to FMA. Okay, so I, I apply it back to Kali Eskrima Arnis to stay true to, to my roots and, and, you know, with this new perspective. So I, I, that is kind of like my, um, what I've been doing. Okay, well, what I've been doing is, is go out and then bring it back in and then see how that applies, how, how it evolves the stuff that I already know, you know, my bread and butter, which is Kali Eskrima Arnis. So uh, anyways, when I did the four ranges of combat, for me, um, like I said, it's based off of the Filipino martial arts styles because within Kali Eskrima Arnis, there's a lot of different styles and some, you know, focus more on long range, others more on closer, you know, it's, it's different even though it's still Kali Eskrima Arnis, was basically the same thing. And um, this was, this ranges of combat for me was very, very important. And to separate it from like the, for example, the Jeet Kune Do ranges of combat, I have heard it say that people say, instructor, instructors say that the Jeet Kune Do ranges of combat is just a guide. Okay, it's just a guide to help you, you know, kind of like know when to use what technique, you know. So it, it's a guide. It's, it's not meant to be taken into, you know, stone writing, right? Whereas to, for me, my four ranges of combat is much, much stronger than that. So it is meant to be written in stone so it is a set of rules that you need to follow and if you don't follow it you're going to get messed up so mine is very very strong it's not just a guide it's these are rules okay so that's a big big difference there and and i hope you guys understand that and and the reason why i i came to that right is because when the early ufc came out and i'm talking about like 10 and under right so like the first 10 ufcs and when when you watch that um it was kind of apparent that all the stand up strikers that went in there they had some sort of knowledge an idea of the ranges of combat i mean it's it's obvious that they did but they all got dominated and pretty much all of them got defeated and destroyed by grapplers grapplers ruled the early ufcs and um if you didn't know grappling you're not going to be successful in the ufc and that still holds true today okay you need to know how to grapple um so when you look at that i thought to myself what did these guys do wrong because they had an idea of the ranges of combat. They were like, okay, in far away, I'm going to kick this wrestler with kicks. And if they get closer, then I'm going to use punches. And if they get even closer, then I'll use elbows, headbutts, and knees. Headbutts allowed at the time. and uh, Or maybe they knew some throws and stuff. But you know what? None of that worked out in their, in their favor. Like So what I'm trying to say is that knowledge, that understanding wasn't enough and and that's why using it as just a guide or using it as a, a template for you to organize your techniques for me it, it just wasn't enough okay so what I discovered was that each range has its own characteristics and the way that I like to view it as, um, please don't misunderstand this, but this is just kind of uh, to help you understand what I'm trying to say, is that each range is like its own playground. That, that's the way that I view it. So 
uh, long range, medium range, close range, and ground range. There's four ranges. Each one is its own specific playground. Like one might be more like has a big massive sandbox and it focuses more about playing with the sand. The other one's more like an obstacle course. The other one is more like um, it has a, a small, like a uh, shallow pool area, has water coming from the bottom, and it has maybe like a shower thing that you could play around in. You know, um, so like each one is totally different. So if you show up at the one with the sandbox and you don't have a, a small bucket and, and a shovel, you're not going to have as much fun, right? You won't be able to play. So what I'm trying to say is that um, you need to know the characteristics in order to play effectively. So that that's kind of like the the metaphor I, I like to, to give is that each one is its own playground, right? And you need to know the rules. Um, and, and that's why it's so strong. And, and those guys in the early UFCs, to me, even though they understood they had ranges, they had an, an idea of ranges, and they organized their techniques that way, they had no idea about the characteristics of each range. And that's why they weren't able to to do well like like a perfect example in the early ufc's is ufc 3 champion steve jenna okay if you look at that guy i mean not by today's ufc standards but if you just look at martial arts techniques wise the guy is well balanced he has techniques for every range okay but if you watch like for example his fight in japan against marco huas I mean, he got taken down to the ground against his will. Now, there could have been a million reasons why that was, that was so. You know, he had jet lag. You know, he wasn't feeling well. Uh, he was scared. I mean, it, it could have been a million different reasons. But I'm still saying strategy-wise, I didn't see anything there that enabled him to use his techniques, right? So other than that... He wasn't 100% unfamiliar on the ground because he immediately did get taken down to the ground. And there, you know, uh, it wasn't a long match, but what probably helped him survive against a beast like Marco Huas was probably that, you know, he wasn't 100%, um, you know, clueless. So, so I'm sure that helped out uh, at least a little bit. But you know, it, it definitely not even close to winning the match, you know, which I'm sure he, he could admit too. But um, in, in no way am I uh, dis disrespecting him. Um, I'm, I'm just saying is that if, if he had the understanding of the four ranges of combat, the blueprint, I think it would, it would really help out. And this blueprint that I'm talking about, the four ranges of combat, there's other blueprints, like I said, but this one, the four ranges of combat, which I said was based off of the Filipino martial arts, what I had noticed, this is can be applied to all combat. It, it is a, a theory, uh, not a theory, it is, it is theoretical. It's an idea that can be applied to all combat including like warfare. So we could be talking about intercontinental ballistic missiles. <laughs> we could be talking about submarine warfare, uh, dog fights with uh, uh, fighter jets. Um, you know, it, it pretty much anything. If aliens came and invaded, we could apply it to that as long as they don't have a time machine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, per pretty much, you know, the, the four ranges of combat, it, it, it's just an idea. So it could be applied to all of that. But obviously, I'm not interested in, in that kind of application. What I'm interested in is for, is for the street and pretty much the stuff that you're more likely to encounter in the street. So not a bazooka or a rocket launcher, not, nothing like that, right? So, uh, it, but it could still be applied to like a riot situation, a bank robbery, a mugging situation, a home invasion. You know, these are all different situations, but it could be applied to each one of those, okay? Because what all of those have in common is no matter what is going on, it's about distance, okay? And that's what this is based off of. And anyway, uh, so the four ranges of combat to me is super, super important. And it is, it is like I said, it is a game changer for me. And, and the big difference there is, you know, uh, 
lots of other styles and lots of other people know about ranges of combat, but not like this. They, they don't treat it like, they treat it in their defense as just a guide, okay? It's just a loose idea, whereas the mine is, it's not only um, an idea, we're talking about it's a set of rules for you to follow, okay? Now, furthermore, okay, in, in this application um, of the four ranges of combat, one of the things that, that um, I do is, like I said, I map out the rules for you so you know how to play for each playground. Super, super important, okay? So whatever techniques that you have, not only can you just put them in the ranges to organize, now you have to know how to play. You, you need to know the rules that you're going to be playing by, right? So I, I break that down for you guys so that you can do that, okay? Without those rules, just organizing the techniques, like I said, is to me not enough, and that's why the early uh, UFC contestants that uh, were not grapplers did not do well okay or even if they were grapplers but they had striking ability they weren't able to maximize their striking ability because they were instantly taken to the ground why because they didn't understand the characteristics of the different ranges but that being said okay um when i'm looking at filipino martial arts um because remember i'm, I'm gonna apply this back always always apply it back to traditional Filipino martial arts. And when I do that, um, one of the things that, that I noticed was that there's fighting ranges and non-fighting ranges. Okay. So that was super, super important. And why is this important? This was important because to me, Kali Eskrima Arnis, at the end of the day, is a military combat system. It's military combatives at the end of the day. You know, we, we train with sticks, which is a baton, tactical baton. We train with knives. You know, I mean, these are all, those are, those are weapons. And, um, and, and if you include machete, that's, that's even more, you know, uh, of a weapon. And for me, this is, this is about warfare, okay? And if you look at the history of Filipino martial arts, it was always warfare was involved, right? Now, there were times where, from my understanding, it was gang street warfare, but there's plenty of other times where it was actual war. And I'm talking about modern wars, and I'm also talking about ancient wars, ancient battlefields, right? So it is a very combatives-based, warfare-based battlefield art is what I'm trying to say. And when I look at those roots and when I talk to people who've been to war in, in the Philippines or, or they know people that have been to war in the Philippines, when they tell me what kind of tactics they used, it's not what we learn, <laughs> to put it simply. It, it is not what we do in Filipino martial arts. And, and that told me that the offense that we're doing in the Filipino martial arts, Kali Eskrima Arnis, that's not what it's about. We're learning, and then there is the other philosophy in Filipino martial arts said, if you want to learn how to defend against something, like people say, how do you defend against a knife? How do you defend against a machete? And if you want to learn how to defend against those things, first you have to learn how to use those things. That is a Filipino logic, right? So then that tells me that this is really a defense system. It is a survival system, okay? And our so our offense is kind of, oh, A, we don't even use it in actual warfare, and then B, the real purpose why we learn the offense is for defense. Okay. So, the, and then that further along, like meeting people like uh, Professor Bram Frank, who is also, he, he is um, a first generation student of Professor uh, Remy Presas. So same lineage as me, but you know, uh, I mean, we're not even in the same category. Okay. I, I'm not even an official af affiliate or anything like that. So I'll make that very clear. Okay. But, 
Um, when you look at his methodology, his ideology of Filipino martial arts, and you know he's talking about it's about defense. His system is a defensive system, and to me that only just backs up my train of thought here and it's so important because in today's world martial arts world self-defense world it's all about offense so i feel like the world went the opposite direction and i feel like the filipinos they had it right they they still have it right that it this is defense is the way to go and and this is from a war perspective not not from a street self-defense perspective this is from war Okay, the most violent, worst thing, you know, that humans do to each other on a massive scale is war. And in that scale, defense is the way to go. And why is that? Well, and, and back to the Filipino history is that the Filipinos are excellent guerrilla warfare fighters. That is something that if you do the research, you find out that they were masters at doing that they kind of didn't have a choice but that's what they they were experts at and so therefore when you're talking about guerrilla warfare what is guerrilla warfare it's irregular warfare and and so in order to understand filipino martial arts kali eskrima arnis i feel like you need to understand guerrilla warfare and so this guerrilla warfare is irregular fighting. Why are you doing irregular fighting? Because the enemy has superior forces. Okay, so when the enemy is more superior than you are, they got better weapons, they got more numbers, they got better technology, or whatever the case it is. Okay, time and time again, the Filipinos had, had to deal with that, you know, like, like with the conquistadors coming in, they're having better technology, you know. Um, when something like that happens, you cannot go head on with them because they're better, they're superior, okay? And I'm not putting down the Filipinos. I'm just saying you're thrown in that circumstance. What you going to do? And if you go head on, you're going to lose. So don't go head on, right? You have to go irregular. You you have to find creative means and the the key to that and and the the most common guerrilla warfare tactic is to hit and run quick quick bursts of attacks and then take off right and and what's important about that is survival you have to survive why why do you have to keep doing it because those are small quick attacks so boxing wise that's a jab and a jab's not going to finish the fight. A jab's not going to win you the fight necessarily. So you have to do it over and over and over and over again. You have to, it's going to be a battle of attrition. It, this is not the normal warfare that you want. It's not, it's irregular fighting, you know. And so, um, and then, and then boxing wise, they found out that if you have a good jab that you can win the fight, you can totally manipulate and change the fight. So guerrilla warfare can be extremely effective. All right. So when you look at it from that point of view and you understand when they attack, how do they attack? They attack when the enemy is the most vulnerable. And in the street, obviously, we cannot do that because we're not the bad guys. If we are the bad guys, sure, you can do that, but we're not. So then, it's one, once again, it's about survival. It's about defense. And it all, to me, makes sense if, if you view it this way. So, so then when you look at the four ranges of combat, back to the four ranges of combat, I noticed that long range is when you don't want to engage in medium range. Long range comes into play. Okay. So like you see it in MMA, you see it in boxing sometimes where, where it's like, come on, fight. What's your problem? You're running away from me. Well, that's long range. It's unwilling to engage to fight. But long range has its own way of fighting. And, and for a lot of that, look at fencing, look at point fighting. Okay. So that 
And for MMA, look at like John Jones. Look at the way he fights. He has long range. But anyway, anyway, long range, what I'm saying right here is unwilling to engage into medium range. Medium range is when you're both in reach or, or they're, if they're in reach of me, that means they can hit me. I'm already, this is red lights should be flashing, but it also means I could probably hit them too. So, but if I do that, we're going to be in a slug fest. We're going to be exchanging shots and that's fighting. That's where boxers, kickboxers, MMA fighters, they have to go in there and they have to show their valor. They have to show their strategic dominance. They, they have to dominate the opponent. They have to be willing to take that chance. And they're rewarded for that. The more aggressive person, the person that controls the fight aggressively is going to get rewarded for, for all of that. So um, medium range is fighting. That's what I'm trying to say. Long range is not. Okay. You could still fight in long range, but I'm saying it's not engaging and fighting like like the way you typically think of fighting. So um, medium range is a fighting range. Long range is not. So the next one is, to me, um, close range. Close range, I would say, it, c it can go both ways, but close range is not a fighting range. Okay, B why? Here, here's, here's proof of that. In close close range could go either way, honestly, because I like for example, uh, in a like one of those prison footage videos where a person just gets shanked to death, they get stabbed like twenty times, right? They just get rushed up upon, grabbed, and repeatedly uh, what the Dog Brothers have called the sewing machine, and they get stabbed over and over and they die, right? Horrific, horrific death. That is close range. Okay, they couldn't get away, they were grabbed or whatever, and put up against the wall and stab, 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 and that's close range. Okay, that's not medium range, that's close range. Okay, so there, that's that's hor horrible, they got finished. But if you watch boxing, how many times when boxers are taking too many hits, they go in and they get in the, the clinch and they protect themselves that way. That is not fighting. You're you're avoiding medium range. You're not boxing. You're you're grabbing and holding on. Okay, you tie up their arms. It's called the tie up. You tie up their arms. They can't punch you, and and that is not fighting. So I would say close range is also a non-fighting range. Although it could be a range where you could get finished. So you got to be careful. But definitely it could also be used as a non-fighting range. Ground range, as we know, that's wrestling. You know, a lot of wrestling occurs there. You could still strike there, but a lot of wrestling occurs there. So um, it's a fighting range to me. Boxing and wrestling are fighting arts. They teach you how to fight, you know, and then you could competitively, competitively compete in those fighting styles and learn how to fight. If you want to fight, study boxing and wrestling. And um, what I what I love one of the things that I love about Filipino martial arts is that we cross train in boxing. And I think now today we're starting to cross train more into wrestling too, where uh, we're, we're cross training more like into MMA as well. But that is, that is important to me. Why? Because if you look at the Filipino martial, martial arts as a whole, right, we have Kali Eskrima Arnis, kind of the same thing, right? So put them in one, one spot right there. And then you have Dumog, which is Filipino wrestling, and you have Panantukan, Filipino dirty boxing. So you have the boxing and the wrestling, they exist, and then you have the Kali Eskrima Arnis. So to me, these two, like I said, boxing and wrestling, are fighting styles. They're fighting arts. These are fighting. Kali Eskrima Arnis is a separate entity. What is that? To me, this is non-fighting. This is self-defense. Okay. I'm my I'm not interested in who's the better boxer, who's the better wrestler. I I'm not here to engage. That's I'm here to get away. I'm here to survive. Okay. So this is to me non-fighting, okay? And so if you look at it that way, it's the boxing and wrestling is is a separate entity, right? Now you could 
connect it and train in all of it, which I did, you know, but in, in my area at the time in Texas, there was no Panantukan, there was no Dumog, so instead I trained in Muay Thai kickboxing uh, and I trained in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, right? Though that's what I trained in instead of the boxing and the wrestling, but to me it still covers, right? Um, similar enough. So then you, you get the full... Um, picture so I think that's important to have the full picture but then you have to realize I'm not here to fight so the boxing and the wrestling is there if I need it just in case I know how to do it if I need it but I that's really not my goal so I want to stick with here which is the Kali Eskrima Arnis so um, that is non-fighting and now let's go back to the four ranges of combat I was telling you guys that Long range is non-fighting, medium range is fighting, close range is non-fighting, ground range is fighting. So that tells you that medium range and ground range are fighting. Those are for boxing and wrestling. Okay. And then long range and close range is the non-fighting ranges. So long range and close range is what you should be doing in Kali Eskrima Arnis, if you follow this logic, okay, if you don't want to fight, then you should be doing long range and close range. So in my system of Filipino martial arts, that is what I teach you guys, is to focus on long range and close range, okay? And if you look at um, Professor Bram Frank's system, what I'm seeing to me is he, to me, he's more of a close range guy. Okay. So it still follows into that um, non fighting aspect. And he is a defensive advocate, you know, to, to be def defensive. You're there to survive and protect yourself, not to see how much damage you could do to the other person. And, uh, you know, once again, that resonates so well with me. It makes sense to me. Uh, I can see why we're the same lineage, you know. But anyway, so that is my train of thought. And um, I, look, I don't want to be ignorant about medium range and ground range. So I do, you know, I definitely over the years I've cross trained and, and I've, I've worked on that. But like I said, the primary for me for... Kali Eskrima Arnis and my street self-defense system is long range and close range and avoid medium range and ground range as much as you can. So that, that's the simple, simple um, strategy there, the over overview strategy. I don't want to get suckered into trading shots. I don't want to get suckered into wrestling with the, with the other person. So uh, I, I hope that helps. That's it for now. Thank you for viewing. And take care, folks.